So let's just uh, play around with, uh, with, with just uh, a few examples and try and see if we can reinforce this. Um, hope this is probably going to make sense. If we uh, so let's say we are adding 1011 and 1101, right? Effectively, what we are adding here is uh, 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 plus 8, right? Which is 11 here. This is 11, is it? 1's place, 2's place, 4's place, 8's place, right? 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 1 is 11. And then we're adding 11 to uh, 1 plus, 1 plus, this is 2, 1 plus 4 plus 8, which is 13. So we're adding 13 and 11 here. The answer should be 24, right? Yes? Isn't this 11? Uh, Am I on my own here? What, uh, fine, we'll use a calculator. I know, I know, yeah, well, we don't know. I'll sorry. use a calculator, 1011. One zero, can I finish this? One zero one one converted to decimal is 11. Uh, one one zero one converted to decimal is 13. So effectively what we're saying here, here's the thing, there's a reason why I'm, I'm, I'm converting these to decimals first. When you're doing this for the first time, for you to be able to follow through with what you're doing, just convert them to, to decimal first, because for you, decimal is more intuitive. You've been doing this since grade one, in fact, since kindergarten or something. So convert these numbers to decimal first, get the answer, and then try and see if you can work backwards, right? So what we're saying is we are, we are wanting to, to have a situation where we get 24 as the answer. Whatever answer we're going to get here should be 24. This is what we are saying here. Should, should be equivalent of 24. Yes, there was a question? I thought there was a um, question. Um, I was lost on how you... Yes, yes, sir. I was lost in how you were doing the additions. Um, since you started converting them uh, back into binary as 11 and 13, that's when you add them. You convert them into binary, that's when you add them. And how no, exactly are you doing the addition? No, 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 I'm not saying that's not what we're going to do, but I'm just saying that the simplest thing to do for you right now. Uh, before you master these things here, these rules we're talking about, yeah? The easiest thing for you to do when you're adding two binary numbers is you do what? You convert them to decimal, you add them up, and then you get the answer and convert the answer to binary. And, and in fact, I'm further saying that as you are practicing to reinforce these rules, to get to understand how you go about adding binary numbers, it will be in your best interest if you first of all convert the binary numbers that you are adding to decimal, add them up and then get the answer in binary before you understand the rules. But eventually you understand the rules, which is what we're doing next, right? So we are adding 1011, which is 11, and 1101, which is 13. To follow the rules, if you remember the rules, when you are adding one and one, what do we get? One and one. We carry one, we drop down zero. In fact, the answer is zero, carry one. So in here, the answer is going to be zero, we carry one. Now what I'm doing here for you to follow through, for those of you that, and I know some of you already know this, but for the benefit of those that uh, uh, are not very familiar with this, what I am carrying over is going to be in this column, in this row, sorry. The answer is going to be in the last row. Do you understand? So pay particular attention to the change in values in this row and this row, right? Again, I'm just gonna start working backwards here so that we understand we're on the same page. When we are, we, when we are faced with a situation where we have one and one, the answer is zero. We carry one, meaning that we move it to the next two's place, which is the next one here, right? And maybe I should have also included uh, Zero, then it's fine. One's place, two's place, and whatnot. All right. So you notice now that this next column, which we need to add, has a one, zero, and a one, which we carried from here. So effectively, we have a one, zero, one. If we go back here, when we have a situation where we have a one, a one, zero, one, one, zero, one, the answer is zero. We carry one. So I'm going to go back here. We're in here, one, zero, one. What is the answer? It's zero, we carry one. We have a similar situation here where we have a zero, one, one. 
What do we do when we have a 0, 1, 1? We come here, we see here, 0, 1, 1, right? Sorry, 0, 0, 1, 1. The answer is 0, we carry 1. We're going to go back here. 0, 1, 1, 0, the answer is 1. Boom. The last part is where we have 1, 1, 1. What is 1, 1, 1? It's the last case, right, where we are saying we, we have 1, 1, 1, we drop 1, we carry 1. Now it's called an overflow, right? If you were working with, uh, not if, but we're working with 4-bit representation, but you notice that our answer has 5 bits. Why does it have 5 bits? Because the, the resulting number is significantly larger, right? So in fact, the answer is 1, 1, we, we, the carry bit here, this is effectively 0, 0, 1, so it's 0, 0, and 1, we just give us, we just drop 1, right? So the answer is 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. And in fact, if you convert this, you notice that it's 24, right? 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 3, 2 to the power 4, 2 to the power, sorry, 2 to the power 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 8, 4, 16. 16 plus 8 is, I don't know, 24, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So here's the thing, right? It's a, I hope it's going to make sense here. It's a, it's a rules, and the, the rules really, they are simple rules. If you think about this, it's just three rules, really. Zero, zero is zero. Zero, one is one. One, one, what, four rules. One, one is zero, remember one. One, 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 one is one, remember one. Uh, it can be a bit uh, confusing at the beginning when you have an overflow like here, right? You must just remember that whenever you carry something forward to the next placeholder, just carry it forward and assume that the things on top here are just zeros. Yes? Good stuff. So here's, a, here's another way of looking at this. Let's say we have this number here, right? Relatively large number. Uh, effectively, what we have here is, uh, what number is this? This is one plus two. This is uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm, it's, it's two, uh, so it's 64 plus 32. Anyway, let's not do this. It's just, I don't want to go around the circles here. So we are saying one, we can actually convert it to, you can convert this to, instead of using a calculator, if you want, you can, let's, in fact, let's, let's do this. Let's not get into the habit of using a calculator, right? Let's say you're still getting used to the rules and you want to just convert this to decimal. Easiest thing to do is nibble, right? Read it up, half a byte, like so. So we know that this is, uh, in fact, this is, uh, this is what, zero, this is one, one, this is uh, one plus two, which is three, plus eight, which is 11, right? Yes? Zero, one, two, three, eight. Eight plus two plus one, 11. Plus six. And then this is, thank you very much, this is six. Uh, and then we do the same thing for this particular number, we split it up into, and you notice that uh, the magnitude is slightly different for these numbers, right? This is much large. This is a much larger number than this one. We split it up into half. In fact, we can finish it, this off and just convert it to decimal, right? This is a uh, 16 to power zero, right? Which is one. This is 16 to power to power one, which is 16, right? Yeah. The, what is the answer here? Uh, we're still using a calculator, I guess. Is that 16 times six, which is 96 plus Plus, uh, plus 11, right? Are we doing this? Is this, I don't yes. know if I have the correct uh, 107. I don't know if it's a correct answer. But also what you can do, right? What you could have done here is just, uh, well, like why are you doing that? You can use the calculator 110, and then convert this to decimal 107, right? So we can do the same here. And the reason I'm working this backwards is I'm trying to latch on to what we've already discussed, right? Some of the things we've already discussed so that this, they sink in. This is why I'm doing this, by the way. So we are saying for this particular large number here, we do the same thing, we convert this to, because repeated multiplication is uh, difficult for a large binary number like this. What we want to do is splice it up into nibbles, right? Or half a byte for bit representation. So we have one, 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 zero. What is the answer here? One plus two plus four. Hmm? Isn't it seven? Seven. Okay, what is, uh, what is uh, two plus eight? What is this? Ten. Ten. Yeah. This is ten. Yeah. 
good stuff. So this is 10. So effectively what we're saying is uh, for us to get the decimal number here, we are going to have to multiply 10 by 16 hmm? and then 7 by 1 because it's 16 to power 0, 16 to power 1. So effectively we're adding 160 plus 7, which is 167. So here's the thing. What we're trying to do is in here, this question is asking us to evaluate 107 plus 167 in binary. That's one way of looking at what we're doing here. And just to confirm that we're doing the right thing, we're just going to see 101, 0011, convert this to decimal, and we have 167, right? So effectively, what we're hunting for is 167 plus 107. The answer what we want, whatever we get here, should be equal to 274. Okay? This is what we want. But fear not, it turns out that it's a lot easier to, to do binary addition. Why do you think it's, they, they don't you see that it's a lot easier to do binary addition? There's nothing like, uh, oh, the answer is because it's a hundreds place, the answer is one carry, is it one carry, is it zero carry one or something, or six carry one? Yeah, remember what you do when you have a decimal number like one, um, 70, sorry, one, 160, I'm trying to think of uh, 169. 169 plus nine. You have large numbers like, oh, the answer is eight, carry one or something. But with a decimal, you only carry zero and the one. You're carrying zero and the one. This is what makes it fun and easy, actually. But anyway, so let's say we, we, want, to, so we want to add this using binary addition. We follow the rules. One and one, simple rule, zero. Again, please pay particular attention to the carry, call, carry row and the result row here. When we add one and one, the answer is zero, we carry one. And look at this. We now have one, one, one. One, 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 the answer is one, we carry one. Zero, one, one, the answer is zero, we carry one. One, zero, one, the answer is zero, we carry one. Zero, zero, one, the answer is one, we carry zero, right? Why did I not carry the zero there? I don't know why. Oh, they, it is. Zero, zero, one, the answer is one. There's no, it's carry zero. One, one, uh, zero is zero. We carry one. One, zero, one is zero. We carry one. Zero, one, one is zero. We carry one. And then we're just going to drop down the one because it's an overflow. So our answer is one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, zero, right? So what we're saying is effectively when we're adding these numbers, this is what we come up with. And really we can we can confirm this by just uh, going to our calculator and just say because it's 274, what is 274 in binary? 10001010. Yeah. Do you think uh, I mean since so, so, so the rules, right? I'm gonna pause here and just find out if uh, people uh, people people are a bit confused with the rules here. I don't know. Do you think this is very confusing or something? 